what's up, witches? It's me, Luna, coming to you from a state of uh, pretty deep fatigue, but I have the best reason to be here, and that is that I've received a gift deck, and wonderfully, it arrived on Samhain, so what a special thing. Hi, Luna. Enjoy your gift. I have this deck and love it. Samhain blessings to you, and that's from Terry Indigo Roses. So this is... Um, Sometimes we see, not we see, sometimes people will choose a deck off my wish list because they want to see my review of it before they buy it for themselves. And sometimes it's somebody's got a great deck, knows I haven't reviewed it, and, and just wants me to have that, and I so appreciate it. This is the Dreaming Way to Row by Rome Choi. It's a U.S. games deck. Dreaming Way Tarot dresses up traditional tarot with contemporary artistic flair. In this exquisite deck, stylish characters breathe new life into the scenes and symbols of the major and minor arcana. Dreaming Way Tarot offers fresh interpretations of tarot and explores numerological as well as elemental influences. And there's an image, 78 card deck with instruction booklet, uh, illustrated by Quan Sheena. And this is 2012 U.S. Games. I have deplasticked it, but I haven't looked at any of it. And the images I've seen are the ones on the front and the back. We have the LWB. Ooh, what cool card backs. Okay. Got a little dinged up. I first discovered Tarot in the summer of 1997. At the time, even before the web was in common use, one of my friends did a search and found that many people were looking for information about Tarot. On an impulse, I joined a Tarot study group, and that was the start of my relationship with Tarot. Five years later, I had to get a job after finishing my college education. Korea was in .NET fever at the time, which provided a very favorable condition for me to get a job since I'd majored in computer science. But I was so attracted to Tarot that I wanted my career to deal with Tarot. Before graduating college, I had taught Tarot to students at an amateur level and started to read Tarot cards to customers professionally. Wishing to enhance my spiritual life beyond Tarot, I entered Seoul University of Buddhism, where I majored in transpersonal psychology. One day, I mean, already, I can't wait to see what she does here. One day, I heard a moving lecture by a famous monk while I was watching TV. I suddenly realized that I already had everything I wanted and there was nothing more I should pursue. That realization changed my life completely. I found the meaning of happiness and could understand the client's matters more deeply. As my understanding of people grew deeper, the more I could understand Tarot and use it to help people. I also realized that there was no evil in the world in the first place and I should just accept people as they are. I started incorporating these insights into my Tarot lectures. After that, the lives of my students as well as my own life started to change. They started to love themselves more and live better lives. They embraced their lives more and stopped hating other people. <laughs> Imagine that. They all came to understand that we are not becoming happy, but rather we are already happy. I try to bring this message into the Dreaming Way to row. Rather than searching for happiness, just try to embrace the moments of happiness in your life. And it's kind of like understanding that happiness already resides in you and just removing what's in the way. Okay, and then we start right into the major arcana. And I don't think we have, I mean, she gave us enough of a bio there, I think. Unless the book is all crunched, unfortunately. That had to have happened in packaging. Um, then at the end, we get a Dreaming Way 5 card spread. Is there anything else? Dreaming Way 5 card spread. Present gifts, past, change, delusion, delusion, and dream. That's pretty cool. Um, in tarot readings, people tend to think of reversed as the opposite of upright, but that does not mean the cards have opposite meanings. Reversed meanings are usually just weaker or stronger. For example, people tend to think of cold as the opposite of hot, but in fact, there are just different levels of warmth. Reversed cards show different degrees of the same condition. So we have um, a paragraph, and then we have upright, and we have reversed for the majors. And minor arcana. Um, hmm. 
Basic components of humans are body, mind, and soul. Body can be subdivided into matter and body. Mind can be subdivided into emotion and mind. Soul can be subdivided into soul and spirit. How interesting. These six components can be ordered hierarchically. Matter, body, emotion, mind, soul, and spirit from the bottom. Tarot's minor arcana relates to the bottom four steps, which are matter, body, emotion, and mind. Pentacle means materials. Wands is body. Cups is emotion. Swords are mind. Therefore, pentacles have the features of earth and deal with financial and safety related things mostly. I like safety related. It has a conservative and feminine nature. Wands have a fire nature and relate to the body. They deal with desire, passion, and fervor. And this is very interesting. The suit is progressive and masculine. Cups, I like the conservative and progressive, although those have been really appropriated by politics, haven't they? Cups, so, you know, what's the broader meaning? So timely. Cups have a water nature and relate to emotions. They indicate tolerance and accommodation. The suit is conservative and feminine. Swords have an air nature and relate to the mind. They mean pursuit of judgment and high standards. The suit is progressive and masculine. I mean, if you think of conservative, conserving, progressing, um, the inward, the outward, I, I really, my current favorites are um, creative and experiential creative creating and experiencing okay and so um oh then we get a thing on the characteristics of numbers and then uh, we've got the a little synopsis of what the courts are and then we go straight into pentacles um then we get just upright and reverse meanings for the minors i'm already so intrigued all right, the backs are really interesting, very organic looking. I'm reminded of like um, the cells in a plant. There's kind of a green flow, very pleasing and calming to look at. Okay, what? Um, these cards are not in order. Um, these, this came straight out of the plastic, you guys. I'm kind of mind blown here. The, I, I was like racking my brain because I deplasticked everything. And this has been sitting up here on this desk since I opened it. And it's not in order. Okay. Well, we're going with it. <laughs> I'm just kind of gobsmacked. Okay. Wow. Happy Samhain. <laughs> Here's the Six of Pentacles. And it's a recognizable image. The artwork is soft, uh, watercolory colors. There's certainly dynamics of dark and light. And then we've got some fine line work to define, to define some things. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. All right, that's a little better. The star. So we have a very modern feel to it. Look at the shoes and the pants, this kind of apron with a star on it. Is that an artist's apron? And we have two different kinds of pitchers pouring water. Here's the world. I love the style. I love the softness of it. And so we get this, this dude, this older dude who's been reading and he's dropped the book in his lap and taken his glasses off. So is he, but he's holding his pipe. So is he kind of just, I mean, dreaming way, dreaming things into existence, allowing what he's just read to change his mind. Fascinating. Here's the magician. And there's the four tools. I love the sense of fashion here. From the illustrator. And again, I always wonder how closely the collaboration has been between an author and an artist, especially when things are stepping out of the norm. 
here's the three of pentacles. So we don't at all get an idea of collaboration. There's just got a, like a bag on her head and the pentacles are falling out. All right, I'm going to go and look it up. Um, the three of pentacles. There are benefits now, but they are insubstantial and temporary. Competent, but not expert. Reverse says profits are small and are decreasing unsatisfying job, unproductive work. Okay, I'm going to go back here to look at the general meaning of the threes. First completion. The first completion does not refer to the big accomplishments, but it is important in that the first experience of completion involves necessary steps along the way to something more significant. The first completion is typically micro, personal, and short term. Okay. So I'm going to be referring to these, the number descriptions here, because clearly there's a bigger uh, framework to this deck. There's two of cups. Honestly, I'm wrestling with putting them in order because I wonder if there's a progression through the suits. So there's the two of cups. Here's the Nine of Swords. That's definitely much more familiar. The swords are beautiful. I like this. Usually it's this. I like this. Here's the Ace of Wands. And the Fool. Again, I love the clothing. And the Eight of Wands death. So we get a woman in a beautiful black dress. I love these ties and a scythe. And there's the king of swords. And the six of swords. That is certainly familiar. And the wheel of fortune. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. There's Wow, it looks like everything's tangled around the wheel. And it's an angel. Look at the wings. Wow. And look at the thigh high style. I just love the fashion here. Here's strength. It's a really gentle deck. The seven of wands, even when there's aggression like here, there's a gentleness to it. And there's this kind of not really whimsical, but just sort of out there <laughs> with the clothing. And I love it. Here's the high priestess. Look at the shoes. I want the hat. Holding the Torah, sitting on the moon. I'm finding the imagery very appealing. And, and that's important. You know, sometimes it, well, there's information in everything right? When you're using a deck. And if you open a deck and you find that you're having a strong reaction to the cards, like negative, it could be an interesting deck for you to use. Anyhow, here's the chariot. And he's actually holding reins. That's new. There's the ten of wands. I like this image rather than like carrying this bundle. We're seeing the struggle in picking everything up, which really... Um, when I was, uh, running my business, 10 of wands would always tell me that someone has bitten off more than they could chew, that they were carrying things that didn't belong to them. So this idea of it's my choice to pick that up and carry it is cool. There's the ace of pentacles and the eight. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just still gobsmacked that these are out of order. Someone has to have shuffled them, and it wasn't me. Eight of Pentacles. Like the long pointy shoes. There's the Queen of Pentacles with her baby. That's, that's lovely, and I love the arrows pointing down. Three of Wands. <laughs> Lots of checkers. Pointy shoes, little balloony little thing. 
There's the six of wands. That's very victorious. I love the horse's mane and just it's it if you pushed it one step further, you'd have the horse um from Looney Tunes killed a wabbit, you know. <laughs> Hope wound Hilda. Lovely. And there's the five of pentacles. Wow. You know, this kind of modern doorknob. But this idea of just someone out in the cold, out on the porch. Well, there's the Queen of Swords. I like that the swords here are kind of devoid of color, at least the mate of the courts. Page of Cups. <laughs> Wearing that picture on her head. There's the Two of Pentacles. Clownish. Some of the clownish. That's a good word for them. And there's the page of pentacles. Whoever's ideas, and I, I, you know, I'm assuming that the fashion is coming from the mind of the artist. I want to see a fashion show by this artist. I really do. The ideas are so um, unique. There's the empress. Yeah, look at this gown, just like kind of tied on as like an apron. There's temperance. I like the wings that look like leaves. There's the page of swords. The five of cups. Their backs to each other. The Seven of Pentacles, Harvest. Look at the shopping bags. And the Nine. So they've incorporated like the grapes into the clothing rather than having, you know, a hedge. And there's the Eight of Cups walking away. I, I say, I'm saying it over and over again, but the outfits are absolutely wonderful. There's the Two of Swords. Appreciate the blindfold. There's the Knight of Swords. This artist is incredibly talented. And so Quan, K-W-O-N, Sheena, S-H-I-N-A. I want to see more. There's the Eight of Swords. And the Seven. Boy, he really looks like he's making tracks to get away, doesn't it? Such talent. There's the two of wands. Some familiar themes. Look at this. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. Whether that's like a canopy. Very interesting. At things that, you know, when she's talking about the dreaming way, things that kind of stop my logical mind. Perfect. When you're doing readings, there's the Four of Pentacles and the King. Yes, look at the full rich color here. Page of Wands. There's the Ten of Pentacles. Oh, look how like overdressed and self-satisfied just by the expression on a couple faces. Incredible. There's the Four of Cups. Hmm. Humph. Can you see it? The Three of Swords. Oh. The artist is really adept at showing expressions on faces. Here's the Six of Cups. Can I share this with you, please? There's the King. Look, he's got a little ship in his cup. This big sweeping chair for a throne. There are the lovers. I like to see three people, and one the one in the middle is the angel. We will mention that it is uh, not a racially diverse deck. Here's the moon. Playing with the crayfish. I like the glasses. There's the Five of Swords. Yeah, that just self-satisfaction of 
having left somebody out. Bullied. There's the Knight of Cups. I like the different perspectives, some from the side, some coming straight on. There's the Emperor. The Nine of Wands. The Queen of Cups. The Four of Swords. Ten of Cups. Mm -hmm. Definitely get the feel of happiness there. There's the Three of Cups. Big celebration. Look at these big tall hats. Ace of Swords. It's, it's wonderful when you see a deck and an artist that has such a strong, cohesive vision of things. There's the Knight of Pentacles. The devil. Look at this like straight jacket. Chains and straight jacket. So the devil herself here is straight jacketed. I'm trapped. So everybody else has to be too. There's the nine of cups. Hmm. She looks happy, but a little wistful maybe. There's the ace of cups. The Knight of Wands. Look at how this horse is just leaping across. Like it's just, it's so close up and it's moving so fast that we couldn't even get the front and the back in frame. Just brilliant kind of storytelling devices, visual storytelling. There's the Seven of Cups. Got an angel and a, a dragon in the castle. Money. A person, clouds, queen of wands. No kitty. Oh well. There's judgment. The hermit. The hanged man. I love the shoes. The hierophant. Sitting in the forest with the keys. The Four of Wands. That looks very weddingy. Springy. Five. <laughs> Everybody's. Yeah, this definitely looks like some antagonism, animosity going on. Here's the tower. <sighs> you can hear it crumbling. Ten of Swords, the Sun, oh, is that a lollipop? The King of Wands, and Justice. Hmm. Lovely. All right, let's do a blessing. And you know, I know somebody had to have shuffled it because I, I do remember deplasticking and just going like this and it was in order. So I must have left it out and no matter. Somebody once commented um, on another video I did where the deck was out of order and they said that it uh, kind of helped them with their brain, maybe an ADHD brain, having things go in order, they kind of got bored, but mixing it up sort of helped them pay attention. So hopefully that worked for you. It was just what a lovely, lovely deck with some very interesting ideas. So, Terry, thank you so very much. I cannot wait to do this reading for you. And I guess I didn't mention it in the beginning that when you um, send me a deck off my wish list, which is down below, I will read for you. And it's the only way you can get a reading from me these days. By air and fire, may you be purified and charged. You too, Terry. And by water and earth, <laughs> may you be blessed and made whole. 
And by the sound of the bell, may the spirit awaken. All negativity be cleared. Guides and guardians, allies and ancestors. And now uh, this connection that you and I have, Terry, from the gifter and the giftee. I welcome all of my team here and I offer gratitude. I offer blessings and I welcome you. Help me to bring a message to Terry that she will find truly helpful. All right. And I offer you fresh water. I offer you the fire of Azrael. And now let's keep shuffling. <laughs> interestingly stiff for a U.S. games deck. Okay. I'm going to shuffle it face up. That's uh, not expected at all. So someone, it does shuffle better face up. Way better. Someone chose a stiffer cardstock. Yeah, especially since they're long. They're kind of longer than wide. And uh, that usually makes it easier to shuffle. So I, I want to say that if this card stock, if this deck were any wider, it would be actually difficult to shuffle. All right, so we know we're shuffled. Now let's focus in. Spirit of Divination. <laughs> what message wants to come through me to Terry today? Okay, here they come. One, we have the Magician. We have the Knight of Swords. We have the Wheel of Fortune. Ten of Cups. Queen of Wands, and the Four of Pentacles. Okay, so Magician here um, talks about the manipulation of resources, the, the, the skill of manipulation. So it says you have the ability to manifest whatever you need to. You've got all the basics that you would need to put together for anything at all. And the Knight of Swords talks about like a, an inrush of inspiration. Um, wands are inspiration too, but Knight of Swords being like the mental can talk about uh, a mind that is going, going, going. Could also talk about things coming into the mind. Okay, let's see. So we're looking to change, to do our magic because the mind is moving fast and fired up and there can be anger in there too. The Wheel of Fortune says this too shall pass things are in flux things are changing there's a um an element of the seasons here something cyclical something seasonal something that changes just takes time and it changes and that's kind of opposed to the king of the knight of swords here the ones now 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 <laughs> so we're looking to use magic because things that are changing slowly and organically I want them to change faster. Ten of Cups and the Queen of Wands. There's happiness here. Um, there's a lot of flowing emotion. Nurturing. Friendship. But that stronger family vibe. And then we've got Queen of Wands on the other side who's looking a little introspective. And even like a little lonely. She doesn't have her cat here. She's looking this way towards this Ten of Cups and feeling, is she feeling empty nesty? Is she uh, just kind of looking to the side? Where am I? Who am I? What? Okay. And then down on the bottom, the Four of Pentacles, what I'm getting there is like conserving of physical energy. And the question that's popping up in my mind is, what are you saving it for? What are you conserving it for? Okay, I'm going to go to the book, and then we'll see if we need to throw any more. 
The magician is one of the two persons in the tarot who have a, who have a Mobius strips. One person means wisdom and the other means strength and love. The Mobius strip also indicates infinity. Therefore, the magician means infinite wisdom. Okay, who has a Mobius strips? I don't even see a Mobius strip there. So we're talking figuratively. The person can do his or her job most efficiently and has the ambition to succeed in all endeavors. Usually the card refers to a person 20 to 40 years old. How interesting. Never heard that before. Upright is wise, dexterous, attractive, creative, confident, amorous, well taken care of, outgoing, an engineer, programmer, or strategic planner. She really brings her very own to this. Uh, reverse says the biter is bitten, overconfident, cheating unintentionally, and business failure. Okay, so creative, wise, um, out get an engineer, a programmer, strategic planner. So we've got a lot of work going on here, and the Knight of Swords backs that up with just maybe too much um, mental activity going on. You know, the keep you up at night kind of stuff. Good judgment, overbearing, acts with authority, arrogance, opinionated, dogmatic. See, that's really interesting. That sounds more like the King of Swords to me. King of Swords, she says, reasonable father, capable, incredible, high standards, analytical mind and clarity. Okay. So the Knight of Swords in this deck really bears that stubborn, opinionated, rigid kind of thing. So that, in that case then we're seeing that in order for change to come here, um, and it is interesting too that the magician is described as a person, the description of a person. Okay. So, opinionated, dogmatic. So the, this is bringing kind of an element of the change that you seek comes in changing the mind that this rigidity, look at, he's moving towards the past. Every, everybody's looking towards the past, but um, the wheel of fortune says change. And if we want to see real change, according to our intention, that we've got to change the mind first. And that is like a slow cyclic thing going on. Okay, Wheel of Fortune. There is no predestined plan for us. What you do today will affect your tomorrow. If you're unsatisfied with your situation now, you need to make changes in your life. Expand your outlook by stepping back to see the larger cycle of events. Cycles of events. Increased awareness can alter attitudes and outcomes. The upright is vision, finding answers, getting involved. Experiencing change, moving in a new direction, unexpected encounters, finding opportunities. So things are moving and changing. But again, that Knight of Swords. Um, all right. So here's another thing. This is saying that we can't really control the natural cycles, that things are going to change organically. They're going to change according to the laws of nature. You can have an effect of, on that magically with the magician you can put your intention and and catch the cycles that are going on add your attention to that but the knight of swords is kind of the guy that wants it his way whether it goes with the cycles or not so going to try to impose their will upon things that organic are organic and or the uh kind of like thinking i can change the seasons with my mind you know i can make it not be the thing that it is so we want to be careful about that ten of cups upright is happy family peaceful home strong relationship harmony serenity forgiveness family bonds and joy that's pretty straightforward let's look at uh the oh wait Wands. We've got Queen of Wands. Very determined woman, hardworking, 
desire to control, self-sufficient vitality. So these two here, Knight of Swords and Queen of Wands, does talk about somebody that has very strong ideas and likes to be in control of things. But we have to consider others. And this being more in the past is like the family roles changing and now passions are coming forward creativity is coming forward there's still a lot of thinking going on about it then we got the four of pentacles the four is firm reluctant to share with others unable to express creativity or feelings withdrawal resistance to change okay so She's looking kind of internal here and this inability to express creativity or feelings. So what I'm getting here over this whole thing now is that we need a creative outlet. The magician here says, I have all these things. What do I do with them? She's saying, what do I, these are my own visions. Things are changing. So my rigid ideas and rigid ideas can also kind of get in the way of expressing warmth and love to family. So there's a, a call here to soften and allow things to follow their natural cycles. There's also a strong indication of there's some creativity that needs to be expressed. And in order to do that, you're going to have to let resources flow. It's sort of like somebody that buys like a set of really cool new um crayon think about getting a new box of crayons when you were a kid and how cool they all look those little flat tops and things and they smell so wonderful <laughs> and you want to you want to color with them but you don't want to ruin the crayons themselves you know i just want to have the crayons so it's kind of want to eat my cake and have it too you you need to use your resources in order to create new things in order to um yeah to create you buy the the um the paints you've got to use those paints to make a painting you can't just have the paints so there's this idea because the magician can take one thing and manipulate it into something else we've got the resources here we want to manipulate them so that i can express my creativity so i can express my love my happiness but we really have to maybe come away from the rigidity of mind. Okay, I'm just looking at the bottom six of cups down there, which is passing on of information, um, memories, creating memories. Let me read it just for fun. Nostalgia, recalling the past, personal tradition, appreciating simple joys. Personal tradition. So maybe there's a, an updating of tradition that needs to happen so it more accommodates your, your creative visions and impulses all right wow swords cups wands pentacles and two majors and a court two courts so we had the whole a full monty here which is a wonderful thing um hang on let me get back in the middle okay <laughs> so again terry thank you thank you thank you for this wonderful Samhain gift let me know if the reading hit the mark in any way. And um, I think I'm going to go rest because my eyes look like piss I was in the snow. All right. Take care. And again, if you want to get a reading from me, go down to my wish list down there and purchase me a deck. And uh, if you want to put a question on your, you know, in a note, you can do that. If not, I'll just do a general reading. So thank you again to all my viewers for being here. And thank you especially to Terry. Many blessings to you. See you next time. Till then, this is Luna. Blessed be. Thank you.